Hi everybody, welcome to Hashtag Go Right with Peter Boykin, where we explore the latest in American politics with a focus on liberty and the principles that uphold our constitutional republic. Let's first discuss the escalating tensions at the Democratic National Convention. Pro-Palestinian activists have taken to the streets in Chicago, expressing their discontent with the Democratic Party's policies on Israel and Gaza. Now, what started as a peaceful protest, we all know peaceful protests, right, quickly turned violent as demonstrators clashed with police, leading to multiple arrests. The situation intensified when these activists Frustrated with what they view as the party's inadequate stance on Middle Eastern conflicts, burned both U.S. and Israeli flags while chanting Free Palestine. And I'm pretty sure some people were also chanting Death to America and Allah Akbar. As these protests raged outside, inside the convention, former President Barack Hussein Obama took the stage, or Barry, took the stage to support Joe Biden. During the stage, Obama stated, quote, history will remember Joe Biden as an outstanding president who defended democracy at a moment of great danger. Uh, alternative history. Uh, however, this praise comes amid increasing divisions within the Democratic Party. As seen with Senator Bernie Sanders, let me tell you, let me tell you something. Uh, <laughs> as seen with Senator Bernie Sanders' critique, Sanders, or S Sanders took aim at the influence of wealth in politics, asserting that billionaires in both parties should not be able to buy elections. I'll agree with him on that, including primary elections. This comment highlights the ongoing tension between the party's establishment and its progressive wing. Now, it's important to note that an editorial comment in one article described Obama's speech as blowhard and suggesting an irony in his support for Biden, alluding to the supported or supposed coup to remove Biden from the 2024 ticket. This claim, lacking substantial evidence, should be regarded as opinion rather than fact, but you know what's up. Now let's turn to an intriguing development in the 2024 presidential race. Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s running mate, Nicole Shanahan, has hinted at the possibility of the RFK Jr.'s campaign withdrawing and uniting with Donald Trump. In the recent interview, Shanahan discussed two potential paths moving forward, forming a new political party, risking a split in votes, or joining forces with Trump to prevent what she describes as an existential threat to Kamala Harris's presidency. Now, this potential shift towards Trump reflects a strategic calculation to consolidate votes against the current administration. Trump, when asked about the possibility, responded positively, saying, quote, he's a very smart guy. I've known him for a very long time, and I didn't know he was thinking about getting out, but if he's thinking about getting out, certainly I'd be open to it. Now, it's crucial to clarify that recent reports from the Washington Post suggested that RFK Jr. has been in talks with the Harris campaign about a cabinet position in exchange for his endorsement. Both RFK Jr. and Shanahan have strongly denied these claims, labeling them as, quote, fake news. The suggestion that these reports were planted to undermine RFK's potential endorsement of Trump is speculative and should be viewed as opinion. Now, these developments underscore the growing unrest in the Democratic Party and the broader impact of third-party candidates in a tightly contested election. As we move closer to the 2024 election, the, un you know, you know, the unity of political parties and the decisions of key players like RFK Jr. will undoubtedly shape 
the future of our constitutional republic. And so let me give you the hashtag go right recap. Not a lot of news to talk about, but flatly, when it comes to endorsement, I know that there was rumors about RFK Jr. saying, hey, I'd take the place of Biden. Um, it's not shocking that RFK Jr. would say, especially after they tried to assassinate Donald Trump and what was behind that, the conspiracy of probably they were hoping it was going to happen. Now they can't try it again because of the flub up. I'm pretty sure that RFK and Trump had some speech, speech about that. And I think that might have changed the mind of RFK Jr. And it changed the mind of a lot of people. People will understand. It will either be a tight... I know this is weird, you know. Either though it sounds like a Bush moment. Oh, either they're going to do it or they're not going to do it. Well, I don't see a Kamala Harris victory. I don't. I will either see a tight margin, like a lot of these presidencies, or you will also see an unbelievable landslide for Donald Trump, like the 2020, and they won't believe it. And they'll be leaving, living in their own little world. And at the same time, you know what's crazy? They have persecuted, political prisoner people because of January 6th. Because of a trespassing into the Capitol building. Oh, it's so-called insurrection. And they're still arresting people. They just arrested a police officer from North Carolina. They won't release the people who are in there now. The Supreme Court have already said that it was not trying to... I think the charges of, of interfering with government, blah, 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 they said that doesn't fly. There should be a lot of people released, but they won't. They are doing everything in their power to politically keep these people in jail beyond as much as possible. Because we protested about the election being stolen. And then they, just like COVID, the big C, they wouldn't let us talk about election integrity because it was a steal. And we have to make sure they don't do a steal now, but I don't think it's going to happen. They've technically stolen the presidency already from Biden, pushing Kamala into it, even though we know Biden couldn't do it. It's funny that Barack Hussein Obama would talk about Biden in a positive light, when we all know that he was probably puppeting Biden. He probably said, I can't puppet this guy anymore. He's just getting on my nerves. Let's put Kamala in. There's a lot of shady business going on. And unfortunately, here's the other deal. There's over 20-something babies who have now been aborted during the DNC in, what, the first day or so. We totally know that the Democrats, at least the one in charge, the very far left extremist Democrats, they don't live in the same world as the rest of us MAGA people. Because, you know, they label us as MAGA extremists, which is funny considering that it's talking about making America great. I know the again's a little queer, a little, little weird, but making America great? Extremist. Oh, I'm, I'm totally an extremist about making America great. Label me a MAGA extremist if I want to make America great. Does that make them not want to make America great? Because that's what it gives off. It's somehow, if we're not extreme about making America great, then what are they showing? They're showing they, they don't want to make America great. That they don't care about citizens. That they are trying to replace people. And now they're talking about the replacement theory. Honestly, folks, I'm going to reach out to you. If you're black, the Democrat Party does not care about you. If you are gay, the Democrat Party does not care about you. If you are Jewish, they really don't care about you. If you are not completely 100% drinking the Kool-Aid and under their cult influence, they are not for you. They are trying to replace you with easier programmable people, I guess, from the border. They'll get a wide awakening because I think a lot of those people care about 
Republican principles, at least. More conservative principles, at least. Doesn't mean we want to keep all these people that are coming through the border, but they're going to be surprised. For them, it's all about power. For them, it's all about power. It's not about the Constitution. It's not about democracy. It's not about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's not about our Constitution, but it's all about brainwashing you. Brainwashing you. And people go, I wish we didn't have so much infighting with the Republican Party. It's our greatest downfall, but it's our greatest gift that we have so many different thinking, free thinking people and the scale up and down from left and right, you know, on the right wing has gone up and far and the line has moved over. Elon Musk has even talked about that. He was a Democrat, but y'all moved the line. He never went anywhere. And it's those classical liberals who are now Republicans. Because there hasn't been that much of a line. And I don't see a problem with compromise and working together to make America great for everyone, no matter who you are. And there's some people in my party who don't see that way, and they're extremists as well. But as a constitutionalist for liberty, I am all about conservative values, but moderation. Moderation is the best course of action for this country and why America works. And I think we're hitting 250 plus years soon of America. And we're going to keep on trucking. So stay tuned with hashtag go right with Peter Boykin for more insights on the state of our nation and the principles that guide us forward. God bless everybody. Please share. And go to the website GoWriteNews.com and PeterBoykin.com to find out more information about me and our daily news. God bless.